Hello, everybody. Welcome to our world of Build Your AutoCAD IQ. It's good to see many of you have returned, and hopefully we have some new attendees as well. My name is Volker Coco, and today I will be presenting Beyond the Basics, Working with Tool Palettes in AutoCAD 2016. Joining me as a co-presenter is Sarah Emsley and moderator Ashley Drost. So before we get into this, um, we have a tendency to try and bore our audience to death with polls and PowerPoints. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with a quick poll here. And we'll get that out of the way while everybody's getting settled. And let's see what the results are to see how many of you have attended our webinars prior to this, and how many are return users? So right now it looks like, uh, well, the majority of you have been here before, which is great. We love seeing you come back. It's about 83% or so, with 18% right now, 19 saying this is their first webinar. Well, we certainly hope we'll make it worth your while. Let me go ahead and close that. I'm just going to go ahead and share that real quick. So uh, so that we can all kind of see the nice pretty colors we have on that screen there. All righty. I'm going to go ahead and run one more. Um, just kind of want to know what uh, AutoCAD-based application, if you use one, that you do use. Um, are you primarily AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT? Do you work with one of the verticals, such as AutoCAD architecture, electrical, MEP? Maybe Civil 3D or AutoCAD Map or even something else. Looks like the majority of you use AutoCAD. It's almost tied with AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. So we're going to go ahead and close that one right now and just kind of get those results out of the way, let you see what those were. Um, quite a mix of an audience, 19% uh, with the uh, verticals. Well, actually, I guess it's more like 35% with the verticals because Civil 3D and Mapper included in that, and then 4% using other. Could be anything, right? Inventor, Revit, maybe even some other uh, company's application. Uh, obviously, we hope they're Autodesk applications, but we need to get the job done. Alrighty, so that's it for the polls right now. Let's go ahead and look at our little PowerPoint here. Just real quick so you can see who we are. Uh, so that's, well, me at the top, Volker Coco. I'm out of the Lake Oswego, Oregon office. And I'm an Autodesk Technical Support Specialist. Uh, I've been working with AutoCAD since, what, release 10, about 25 years now. We have Sarah Emsley on board, who uh, <laughs> she's a joy to be around and a, and a very talented and knowledgeable um, colleague of mine. And then we have Ashley, Ashley, who is making her second appearance, I believe, on our webinars. And uh, yeah, you can see that big smile on her face as well on the bottom picture there. Um, Anyway, that's us. We're all technical support specialists. Ashley is on the East Coast. Uh, Sarah and I are on the West Coast. All right, so uh, get, get some more of this preamble out of the way. Um, again, welcome to this series of webinars. We're here to um, show you how things work in AutoCAD, show you some of the problems that uh, you may have occur within your drawings, how to fix those, or just so, show you some tools that maybe you didn't know existed or maybe you'd forgotten were even around. And uh, after our webinar, we will do a quick Q&A, if time allows. Uh, on the left of this PowerPoint slide, you can see some of our upcoming webinars. We do have four different tracks that we like to switch between. So the next one's going to be more about 3D, uh, then a great one coming up on troubleshooting your AutoCAD drawings, then intro to 2D drafting tools for a lot of the uh, newer AutoCAD users, 
and then beyond the basics again, and we'll do, be doing some work with line types. We do have all these webinars available on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also download the data sets uh, uh, after the webinar is over to kind of work through these if you want, uh, need to or want to. And um, we encourage you to check out our landing page for upcoming webinars. Uh, refer your colleagues, uh, friends, family, pets, whatever, to that landing page. Sign up for upcoming webinars. We also have um, one thing that I really do want to just take a moment on is the AutoCAD Customer Council. Um, we get a lot of feedback in product support about the product features people would like to see um, added, changed, uh, what you know their their problems with the application nuances, not just technical problems. Okay, um, a way for you to get this type of feedback. Uh, heard is to bring it to our product team and you can do this either through our uh, product feedback uh, links or the by joining the customer council where you can actually um, test the beta software uh, prior to its release if you choose to do so or let your um, thoughts or questions be known with the product team who monitors this council um, they do listen, they do respond, and they do want to hear from you. I encourage you to check out the AutoCAD Customer Council. Again, feel free to leave questions in our chat window as we move along. This session will be recorded. It will be placed on the YouTube channel. All the links are in the survey remind, um, excuse me, um, a webinar reminder that you received as well as the follow-up survey as well as the chat window. Take note of our Autodesk Knowledge Network website. This is a great place to find information about service packs, updates, hotfixes, learning resources uh, for your AutoCAD or AutoCAD-based applications as well as any other Autodesk products. Final thing here too is the answer day for Inventor coming soon. Uh, this will be January 27th. We had a great answer day for AutoCAD, one for Revit. All in the last year, 2015 that is, uh, now we're going to have one for Inventor and that is where the support specialists, uh, our customer care people, our developers, uh, you name it, installation and licensing, they're going to be online uh, in the forum listed there and um, uh, they'll be available to answer your question, questions for 12 hours, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. If you're using Inventor, check this out. All right, today, yes, finally, to the agenda. We're going to talk about tool palettes in the workspace. Sarah's going to be talking about that. She's going to just kind of review how we can get to our tool palettes, how we can make them be not so in our face to where we have room on the to get our work done. Um, and how to populate those palettes. And then I will follow up with customizing these tool palettes and some of the geeky stuff you need to know or need to be aware of if you're going to be sharing the palettes or if you're going to be exporting, importing them, and show you some of the stuff we can just plain do with those palettes. So hopefully this will be an enjoyable session for you. Hopefully you'll learn something. And um, having said that, I went one slide too far. I am just going to hand it over to Sarah right now. So one moment, please. While Looker's going ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, and doing that, I just wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. This is my first webinar back for the new year and I just want to wish everyone a happy new year. I hope everyone had a good New Year's Eve and started off 2016 really productive. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show my screen. Volker, can you see my screen yet? I can. Do you see you, my... Okay. I yep, just make you sure. are there. You're okay, there. Um, let's just jump right into it then. Uh, let's see. There's a couple different options you can get to the tool palette. So you can use the ribbon and select the view tab. 
if it wants to cooperate with me, and hit the tool palettes icon. You can use your keyboard. I know this is Volker's favorite way of pulling up the tool palettes, and that is holding down Control and 3 at the same time. Or you can use the way that I'm normally used to using, and it's just typing in tool palettes anywhere in the drawing or at the command line and hitting Enter. Regardless of the option you choose to use, you'll always get the same outcome. So pick one, try all three, maybe you want to use a combination of the three options, but it basically is up to you and how you want to have your tool ballots pop up like that. And as you can see, it takes up a good amount of real estate when drafting, and it can be kind of a nuisance. So if we just go over here and click underneath the settings icon, we can allow docking and we can either anchor it left or anchor right. And I'm gonna go ahead and anchor left. And you can see it automatically hides our tool palette. But for our demoing purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and unhide that. And I'm actually gonna allow it to float. So as you can tell, there's a bunch of palettes that are already here. And these are pre-made and come with AutoCAD as a default. And I would suggest looking through them. You may think that I, you may not need all of these and you want to get rid of a few. And it's simple as just selecting the palette that you would like to delete, right clicking, and then deleting that option. And I just want to forewarn you once you delete them, it is permanently deleted. And you can get them back by either resetting your settings back to default or you can um, export your settings to a zip file and save them for a future point in time when you want to import those settings back. So just to beware when deleting palettes, um, just to beware for that if any any means you might need to use it in the future. Um, and I want to go ahead and show you how to create a new palette. And then I want to move this up to the top. So you can click on the palette that you just created. You can move it up or you can move it down. And I forgot to rename it, so I'm actually going to select that again, right click and rename. And I am going to name this palette Office Furniture. And now that I created a new palette, I'm going to zoom in to my workspace. And I want to grab, let's say, a chair. Oops, excuse me. Let's grab a chair and then let's just drag and drop that right in our new palette. And let's grab this desk. Let's drag and drop that. And let's do a computer. Oops. There we go. So this is exciting because now you have this palette that you just created from the drawing and you can use it for new or existing projects and it's really easy and it kind of saves you some time from having to go and search for these specific blocks if you know that you're going to use them on a regular basis and with different projects. And that's one way of creating a palette and I want to show you another way and that's using Design Center. And although this webinar isn't about Design Center, we do have a previous webinar about Design Center. It goes into more detail that I know Volker has done before. And you can see that at our YouTube page. Um, if you want to elaborate more on this, Volker, please do if you have anything to say. Oh, yeah, so uh, just briefly for those who aren't familiar with the Design Center, I think of it as a tool which allows me to harvest other drawings, okay? And mm -hmm. I can uh, drag and drop any content from other drawings into my current drawing or onto a palette as Sarah is doing right now. It also allows me to grab content from my local hard drive or the network. So um, uh, you're going to get a short, sweet, little demo uh, how we can quickly create a palette which um, uh, of blocks from your library which um, Sarah is going to show you and uh, I, there's too much more that we could say about Design Center so we're going <laughs> to <Yeah>. move on. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so to get to the to design center, sorry, a fumble of words there, um, we're going to want to select this icon. And I tend to miss it sometimes. So I'm used to just typing in, if you can remember, ADC or ADC center. Either way, it brings you to the design center. And for me, I know exactly where I want to grab a palette from. Let me just navigate there. Give me one second. Let's see. We are going to go here. And you can do this for all your data. It can either be stored on a hard drive or on your network. And that's the fun part of finding your data. You know, it's for, I know for a lot of us that draft it, we kind of put stuff in another folder, then goes into another folder, and it's all over the place sometimes. So it does take some time to navigate to your folder that has your data, but once you find it, it's like finding gold. So I got mine. And you can create a palette by selecting blocks and just right-clicking, create a tool palette. But for this palette, I just want to select doors. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the control and select the doors that I want. Right click, create a tool palette. It's thinking, it's working, and there we go. I'm going to rename that Office Doors. Now that I've shown you how to create a tool palette using Design Center, you can see how easily you can access this data without using the insert command. Um, you can make necessary modifications based on your company standards, and you no longer kind of have to sift through what we just did, try to find our data. Um, now it's just available here at a palette. So to recap, I showed you a quick version of how to get to tool palettes and how to use Design Center to create tool palettes as well. I know Volker will be expanding on this topic more in his demo, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, and I hope to see all of you in our future webinars. Volker, I'm going to pass it over to you, okay? Sounds great. Thank you very much for that overview of our tool palette, Sarah. All righty. Let me see. Did you... Uh, I think I have it here. Okay, gotcha. All right, so let me know if everybody's able to see my screen. Yep, I can. Very yep. good. All right, thank you. So, mm -hmm. great. Um, so, I'm basically using the same drawing here, but I'm going to go ahead, like Sarah said, I'm very command line oriented. So I'm opening up my palette real quick here and um, I'm going to do some of the same things that um, Sarah showed you, but I would like to point out we have with these palettes here, I mean there are a lot of palettes available to you in uh, that are stock with AutoCAD. Uh, a lot of great samples and uh, we can add more to these. We can also combine them into what are called groups, okay? So we actually have groups here that we can work with. We'll take another look at that in a moment. I'm going to go ahead right now and create a new palette, and I'll just go ahead and call this custom just because I can't think of anything more original, okay? Um, and I may have other custom palettes there as well. Now. What I'm going to do is basically drag and drop the blocks, uh, this block, onto the palette as Sarah did a moment ago. All right, so I just pick, I drag, I drop. But the thing is that Design Center will handle additional content. It's not just a block that it can work with. Um, here I have text, okay? This is M text. I'm going to go ahead and plop it onto my custom palette. We'll worry about this generic stuff right here, this M text label in a moment. I'm also going to go ahead now and drag this line work, which is a um, on the layer panels, and basically it's a cubicle panel wall, right? Uh, 
and I'm going to go ahead and just drag this line on here. And you'll see it says polyline. So I've dragged and dropped stuff from my drawing on to my palette. I can also add commands to my palette. And the easiest way to do this, if you don't already have a command, so like I have polyline here right now, that's a command. I could just drag or, or select this, select copy, and then paste it and modify it on the palette. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the CUI, okay, and typically we would find that under manage user interface. I usually type in CUI, and that brings up the CUI editor. And what I'm going to do is add a command from AutoCAD's uh, I can't even think of the word, from the huge amount of commands we have available in AutoCAD, all right? But I'm just going to actually type in Zoom, and what I want to do is have Zoom Extents available to me at all times. Now, granted, I could use the middle or a button or scroll wheel of my mouse to quickly zoom to Extents, but there was a reason for this. Uh, and for what it's worth, once the CUI editor dialog is open, you could actually take any command on the ribbon that's available and drag and drop it onto your palette. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow, that's catching, Sarah. Okay. I was trying All to right. pass the blame onto me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it worked, didn't it? <laughs> All right. So I've, I've populated the palette right now with um, just four different types of um, um, function, um, objects, functions. Um, basically, two of them are commands. One uh, is a, uh, well, three of them are commands, because our mText is a command. Polyline is a command. Zoom extents is a command. And we have a block. We can also, by the way, store hatches on, the, on these palettes. Uh, so. Uh, take a look through the sample palettes if you haven't already. But here's what I'm going to do with this now. Um, I can modify this here. All right, so we have two tools here. Uh, if I were to insert a new instance of the block, or, or I should, not instance actually, a new definition of the block, chair 7. So from, in, from the hard drive, I have a block called chair 7 that looks different than this chair 7. I can redefine it after I'm uh, using this insert function here. Uh, I can open up the block editor, cut copy uh, onto the palette here. I can delete it from the palette or rename it. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it, and I'll call it uh, desk chair. And, and I know that's so original. I realize that. All right. I've renamed it. And if I had a different image, a PNG file is what AutoCAD works with, I could actually specify that image uh, in, um, by pointing to the location on my hard drive where that image is at and have that be displayed. I'm going to go into Properties right now, though. And I could have renamed it here. I could give it a description. Uh, typically, I would. Uh, I can't think of anything real um, profound as a description right now. The block name remains the same here. Now this is important to note that here we have the path for that block, that chair 7. It's showing me that it resides in this particular drawing. Had you grabbed a block from the hard drive, that path would also be hard-coded here. So keep that in mind if you are going to share your palettes at any time. Uh, if the path changes, you're going to have to update. And there's not really, well, there is a global way, but um, uh, I, well, for the most part, you'd want to go in here and change the path for every block. Uh, if you were to try and rename it globally, it would be through uh, the use of a text editor and 
hopefully you have a good find and replace tool. Uh, anyway, I'll get into that a little more later. Uh, let's take a look here. And right now this is set a rotation of 90. Well, that works well in most cases, but I also want to be prompted for rotation once I insert this block into the drawing. Don't want to explode it. I want the color to be bilayered. Those are my standards, but I certainly don't want to insert it on layer zero. I actually have a layer called chairs, so I would want to insert it on that layer. And I'm going to go ahead now and click OK. All right, so let's test this out. I can pick and drag to insert this block, or I can double click on it, which would bring up the um, uh, insert block dialog. So right now I've gone ahead and just picked and dragged, and note that it is on layer chairs, even though it was on this one here is on layer zero, the one I originally got it from. Let's try that again, zero. If I pick on it like this by clicking on it, left mouse picking, and go pick, and it's prompting me for a rotation angle this time around. I'm just going to accept the defaults. All right, so um, I've managed to predefine my company standards as far as layer. I could have changed scale factor, etc., uh, for this particular block. So it's a great way to enforce company standards, whether uh, uh, you're the CAD manager or you're just a, a, a uh, end user, uh, CAD tech who needs to make sure everything goes on the right layers with the right properties. So let's take a look at this M text one here. Again, I'm going to select and go into Properties. And this here has the default text settings uh, uh, description that you would find on the ribbon if you were to click on the M text button. Uh, in, in this case here, I want the text to be, um, uh, I forget what I called it, actually, so we'll just call it Label. Um, and here I may put a description like, use for names, okay, whatever. We could put something else in there. We're going to leave it as M texture, but the nice thing again is that the color is by layer, and it's because I grabbed it while it was on the employee layer, which is the red text, okay, that is the layer it has copied to the palette. It's always going to look for that layer in that particular drawing. And you'll see that it's using the text style that I associated with that piece of text. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we're on layer I wall E right now. I'm going to go ahead and pick. And we'll go with some technical verbiage here. And you'll see that. Technical verbiage for that. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, over there is talking too much. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's great. It, this is great for standards. And it shows me that it is on the right layer. Okay. Now, here is um, a different type of command. The polyline command is what it defaults to. I want this to be, pan, um, let's do this, cubicle panels. All right, we'll call that. And I'll just leave the description blank. And you'll see that here that it has use flyout. That's because I can choose from different commands in AutoCAD that I would want this line work to be associated with. So it has basically all of our line functions here, right? An arc, it's just a different type of line. It's rounded, right? Circle, ellipse, all rounded, uh, polyline. And um, my wish is that we had a right click here to where I could deselect all, but I just have to do a little extra work here one time. 
and I'm going to say you can no longer choose from this other line work. I always want my cubicle uh, wall panels to be made out of a polyline uh, in the drawing. And once I do that, I'm now going to say no, do not. And notice how it uh, has switched to P-line down here. It still has my layer retained. And of course, I could change line weights here, uh, whatever other um, properties may apply, I can change those here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'll pick. And now it's just gone into the polyline command, create a panel a wall on panels 201, and it uh, shows here that it is a polyline. All right, one more on this. And for this one here, zoom extents, I said, you know, I can, what I can do is I can just double click on my the wheel on my mouse or middle mouse button, if that's how you're working, and it'll zoom me to extents. Uh, so that's real easy. But what I want to do with this command is actually go into properties, and I'm going to change this to zoom extents, Q save. And what I really want this to do is to zoom to extents and uh, zoom out by 0.9x percent and 0.9 percent uh, and uh, then go into a save of the drawing um, just because I like to leave my drawings with uh, so I can see the whole image okay in the uh, preview bitmap so in this case here I'm going to go ahead and change this well excuse me leave that on no and I'm going to change the macro in here. And this is all included in the data set. I'm not going to explain macros. We've done a couple of webinars on that. Um, this isn't a class about macros. I just kind of want to show you what we can do with these tools in the tool um, palette. Now I'll go ahead and click OK. Click on this, and it's zoomed out. And as you can see, it all then um, gave us a 9% uh, 0.9% border around here and did a key save. So uh, this is a great way to uh, quickly tailor AutoCAD the way you want to work with it, uh, regardless of whether you're working with blocks, text, dimensions, hatches, or commands. Now, the really cool thing here, is that going to a new drawing, layer zero, it's the only thing that exists in here as far as text styles. We have annotative and standard, right? Let's go ahead and plop a chair in here. And let's go ahead and put some stuff there as far as text goes. Let's go ahead and build some walls. And if we take a look at this now, it's created the layer chairs in the, from the original drawing has placed it on that layer, it's created the layer panels, this is a polyline, if we go to text, well it's M text, it's on layer employee, and it's using my text style. So I often use tool palettes as scratch pads. 
uh, for those who have seen previous webinars, tips and tricks ones, I've brought this up before. I'm working on somebody else's drawing. I don't know what their standards are. I don't care what their standards are. I don't want to memorize their layers or styles. I just want to use them to get the job done. I quickly drag and drop the stuff in their drawing onto a temporary or even permanent palette and then I can use that in my new drawing. So very cool stuff there. All right. So um, always, always going to be a lot more to this stuff. Let's take a look at um, exporting, saving these settings. So as Sarah had mentioned previously, you could just export your AutoCAD settings, and that would also export your tool palettes. But um, often, I like to do the incremental save thing, so I may already have a backup settings file for AutoCAD. Um, I'm, maybe I'm creating tool palettes for somebody else. They're not going to be necessarily mine. Uh, so what I can do is export uh, any customization or even the default palettes. If I don't want to see these ever, uh, I may want to get rid of them just by exporting them and then only having my palettes. So um, it's however you want to do it. Uh, or, you know, always back up, though. That's, that's the bottom line. Now, the way we can back these up is by using the export command in the customized dialog. We can do more than that here, though. We can rearrange things, and then we would probably want to export it. So first of all, here's that new palette I created. If I want to, I can go ahead and create another new palette here, delete this, rename it, whatever. I'm going to create another one. We'll just call it um, garbage, OK? And um, let's go ahead and create one more blank one, and we'll call this plop. And those are now available. Take a look here. There's my plop palette. Garbage, let's see. Yeah, I guess I can't really make them current there. Custom, garbage, plop. But they're kind of stuck within all these other palettes, right? So what I want to do is create a group. These are all groups. These are all the palettes from the left pane here that are in that group. I'm going to right mouse click and new group. Now, don't even bother worrying about where the group is placed here. It's uh, it's not alphabetical, okay? It's arbitrary how it places you a new group. Uh, it will be in the same tr branch of this uh, tree, uh, tree view, but um, not necessarily where you want it to be, and we can take care of that. So, um, um, we'll just call this my stuff. Again, can't think of anything original today. Go ahead and now drag and drop this all the way to the top here. And now I have it arranged the way I want it. While I'm at it, why don't I go ahead and just drag and drop these three up here as well, rearranging them. And you'll see that they're now in order here. And now I'm going to, unfortunately, you can't select more than one at a time. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop these to my stuff group. We'll plop this one, though. Drag and plop. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it in that order. Why not? I'll click Close. And now if we take a look here, you know, we can see the order of the palettes as I dragged and dropped them. And if we take a look here, by right mouse clicking over the title bar, we're going to see my group of stuff. And maybe that's all I want to see right now. So I'm going to select that, and it only shows my three palettes. I've done all this work. This is where I want to export. So I'm going to right mouse click again here. Go into Customize Palettes, and I can export an individual palette easily enough. And what it does, it creates an XTP file. And of course, you would want to 
put that in a spot where you're going to be able to um, easily find it, or maybe it's the location on your network, someplace you want to archive it there maybe. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and plop it in here. And notice that it takes the name of the palette that you're exporting. So I'll just click there. I'll go ahead and export this guy as well. And so I have my individual palettes here. Now, I can export the group. And this will export to an XPG file. Obviously, importing is the same, you know, it's just going backwards, right? Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and export the group to mystuff.xpg. That seems really wonderful that we can do that. There is a limitation here, unfortunately. When you import this group on this computer, on another computer, uh, whatever, it'll import the group. It's just not going to import the content of the group. So you would actually have to drag and drop those three palettes that I have, or maybe more on your part, back into that group. It's um, uh, been logged. I've logged it with uh, the product team, so um, hopefully it'll get resolved somewhere along the line. Uh, in the meantime, just a heads up, okay? Um, again, you can import and just the opposite move of export. All right, so why do we want to export this? Well, backing up, obviously, right? But we may want to share this content with um, colleagues. Uh, maybe it's just one person. Maybe it's everybody in your CAD department using the same standards, right? Uh, so we can do this. First of all, we would want to tell AutoCAD where the location for these tool palettes is going to be. All right, and we do this by going into Options. And you can either type OP for Options. You can right mouse click like I did over the command line for Options. Uh, you can go into Options from here. So many different ways to get. You have so many options for getting into Options. Okay. So here we have the Files tab. That's where we want to be at. And then we have Tool Palette File Location here. You could modify this path to the location on your network, and, um, and yeah, just modify it. Or you can actually add a path. Once you add a path here, then whichever path, whoops, whichever path is at the top. Okay, so let's say underneath this, I have blah, blah, blah path. If I were to move that path on top of the C users path, then that is the path AutoCAD is going to look for for tool palettes. Okay, so you would have to move these up or down depending on which location you want to find the palettes. With AutoCAD LT, uh, AutoCAD, you could then just switch profiles by adding a new profile. With AutoCAD LT, you'd need to uh, restart AutoCAD for the path uh, to make uh, changes to make, uh, take effect. So that's one thing to note about pathing uh, or sharing. Uh, once you have the Palettes say on a network location. If you're an admi CAD administrator or or an IT person, uh, perhaps you don't want anybody modifying those particular um, uh, palettes. Then what you could do is put maybe read-only permissions on uh, the content, and you would have a little padlock icon appearing. It's either left or right. I forget. It's been a while. But you'd have a little padlock icon on the end user's palettes showing that those were read-only. So that's um, one of the ways we can get away with that. Now, um, when 
exporting, there are a couple of things also that you may want to be aware of. And that is the location here of the tool palettes. We have our ATC palette file here. These are all the palettes that were created and their images. So when you are um, placing those um, uh, exported files onto a server location, be aware of where this content is because you'd probably want to um, make sure that your images are appearing and uh, you may have to move some of this to the server. Uh, I'm in the process of writing up a white paper about that. I don't want to spend too much time here. Uh, but one other thing you need to be aware of is under the profiles, support profiles, there it is. There's a file here called fixed profile AWS and profile.aws. The profile AWS is an XML file and it basically, I know this is hard to see this text, it's an XML file and this actually stores all the information about where, what the pathing is for your um, uh, blocks on your, on your palettes, for the images that are being used. And so, remember when I said you need to watch out for this, this path here, okay? If you're going to move these pallets to a network location, be sure to change the pathing. And if you have to do that globally, well, one, I would first always make a backup, but you may have to change the pathing in this AWS file as well. And this AWS file would also need to be um, placed at the location where the pallets are that are con being updated by, say, the CAD manager. Like I said, this is just, these are things to be aware of. You can always contact me if you're having problems with this. I don't want to get into this too much. One, for time constraints. Two, it's a little bit beyond, beyond our basics. And uh, there's a lot to it. And depending on your setup, uh, situations vary with this as well. Um, I will be looking to uh, finish up a white paper on this uh, for network sharing of these pallets. In the meantime, just remember some of these things are here. The AutoCAD help has lots of information on deploying uh, tool pallets to network locations. There's a lot more to tool pallets in general, all the different things you can do, the options, uh, being able to sort, rename, whatever. Um, I hope this will get you started. So, having said that, let us take one quick look here at our PowerPoint, and then we will take a little bit of Q&A, see what, uh, what you have come up with to quiz us with. So, first of all, uh, I've put a few resources on this slide. Whoops, I went one slide too many. And um, the Knowledge Network, great place for uh, FAQs, Q&As, for resources, tutorials, downloads, updates for your application, a great place to leave your questions and get answers or find articles relating to issues that you might have. But I've also uh, added some links to the AutoCAD help file, commands for working with tool palettes. This one right here is um, tool pal palettes not working with UMC paths. Uh, so you could either map your AutoCAD uh, drive paths to your um, tool palettes and the drawings that they're referencing, or this explains how to work with the UNC paths. Discusses import and exporting tool centers, and then about design center. Can't leave that guy out. Great tool. All right, so uh, 
before we do Q and A, because we tend to switch off abruptly, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. We always hope that um, you get get something out of these webinars. Uh, feel free to leave some additional questions, uh, if not already in the chat window, where you might have left some. Uh, but on our landing page, you're welcome to also leave feedback or give us feedback directly by emailing us at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. We have numerous webinars from different teams, so please, in the subject line, add Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Otherwise, we'll all be stumbling around wondering which application are you talking about? Which team are you talking about? So uh, that really helps. So having said that, any questions or uh, is everybody just so happy uh, that they've, <laughs> they've left? I know that Renee has a question. Um, she's just curious why the architectural on the tool palettes does not have English, but um, they have imperial and metric. Yeah, so Imperial is our version. Ver oh, are you? Oh, I guess I should ask. Are you speaking UK English or? I believe she's speaking for Brene U.S. Am I right, Brene? Yeah. So there, I mean, they're all for use here in the U.S. The Imperial mm -hmm. standards. So we have the architectural here. This is what Renee's talking. Hi, Renee. <laughs> this is what Renee's talking about here. We have the imperial samples. Oh, I can't. And those are. I can't see your screen. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that doesn't help, does it? Mm -hmm. um, I told myself I was gonna make sure to this time uh, <laughs> switch to my screen, and um, I never well, listen to okay. myself. You got me. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just never listen to me. So okay. Um, which isn't uncommon for other people either. Uh, so imperial samples, this is what Renee is speaking to uh, about. Um, we have the, the samples we use here in the US and then metric samples. So um, I know there are all kinds of standards out there. Uh, Renee, it, you know, these are just intended to be samples uh, for you to get an idea of what's available, what you can as far as dynamic block goes and what's available as far as what you can put on those palettes. And then you can go in and customize your own to however however yeah. it meets your needs. And you can get rid of these or keep them or, you know, post them on the refrigerator. <laughs> okay, I got one more um, from Seth. He wants to know what was the path for a profile.aws again? Oh, okay. Hi, Seth. Uh, good, good question, and I, I will show you that. Uh, it is in the app data roaming folder. I figured I, I closed my um, um, file manager. Uh, never close your file manager, right? Uh, so if we go to uh, your go to your app data folder, and let me close this guy right here. Go to your app data folder and go to um, username app data roaming. Autodesk, whatever flavor of AutoCAD you're using. Release. It's so nested. I know this is all. This is not our fault. <laughs> this is uh, uh, developing uh, with uh, Microsoft standards. So, um, but anyway, it's in the support folder here, and this is where you'll find uh, the profiles, and you're looking for. Uh, when you first install this, you're just going to have fixed profile AWS, and then anytime you do customization, it's going to create one called profile.aws. And of course, you're also going to find your tool palette um, uh, images and such right here as well. These are all the ATC file uh, files that are the individual palettes. So. Anything okay. else there, Sarah? Um, or? Let's see. Give me a second. Um, let's read done. Okay. 
So question from Don, if I create and save a new palette on my system, then share it with a remote user, do they need the original file that contained the drawing blocks that were used to create the palette? Well, no, not, not necessarily. Um, you're gonna, you're going to have to, so one, make sure all the map drives are the same on the network location, okay? Whether it's mapped or, um, and your keyboard's a little loud there, Sarah. Um, uh, always make sure those um, uh, drives are consistent across the network, which they typically are. Then, uh, when I would create uh, a tool palette based on the blocks that I have in my library, I would actually create um, store those blocks on the network first, you know, in the in a library drawing, and then I would create the palette and I could export that to a location and regardless of which user which users uh, AutoCAD those palettes were added to they would all have the same path because I've already taken care of that if I were to create the palettes using uh, a drawing file on my hard drive then I'd have to go in there oh, well one, I'd either have to give them that drawing file for them to be able to use those palettes as expected, or I'd have to go in there and modify all the paths. I really hope that made sense. I know it kind of went the circles there for a moment. So no, they do not need the drawing unless the pathing for the file points to a location that doesn't exist on their drive. I think I think that answers the question for Don. Uh, let's see if I can find a few more questions. Yeah, we've got about three minutes left, so. Um, if we want to give Sarah everyone some time back, um, I mean, I can't really see any big pressing ones. Um, we can always take questions at our YouTube page, right, and answer back to them. We, we would, I'd be more than happy to get you an answer through there as well if you can't think of a question now. Right, and I'm going to just run one more poll, which um, I'd appreciate if we could uh, just take okay. a moment to vote and let us know if you learned something or didn't. Um, and if most of you, and it looks like most of you did learn something, if most of you learned something, then it was worth our time. We certainly hope it was worth your time. Um, if you didn't learn anything in this webinar, we hate wasting your time, but we do appreciate uh, the fact that you were here, and we do hope that you will return and check out future sessions and gain some knowledge out of those. Not every session uh, is going to be for everybody, you know. 91% um, said yes. 9% said no. And uh, that is great. I mean, that's a pretty good number. And we're going to leave it at that, I think. Um, Happy New Year, as Sarah said. And um, thank you again for being here today. Look forward to seeing you next week when we take a look at 3D Views. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.